there. I'm Anne from Anne Makes here on YouTube as well as annemakes.blogspot.com. And today, if you are still with me, we are doing part four, the fourth episode, and hopefully the final episode I will have to shoot of the Craft Room Tour 2017 with Anne Makes. Um, and to be quite honest with you, it's taken a while for this video to appear on YouTube just because um, yours truly, and I can't blame anybody else for this, uh, accidentally or stupidly, really, that was really stupid of me, deleted all the footage I had. And so I am shooting this part again, and I apologize in advance if I show you parts of the craft room that I, you've already seen in the first three parts. Uh, I will try not to do that. I am working a bit from memory from that, and I will go back and check the other YouTube videos afterwards to, as much as possible, I will try not to have stuff repeated in, in the video. So there will be a lot of editing probably. So thank you so much for hanging in there and let's begin uh, part four. I'll just uh, move the camera around. So, I believe that we ended off part three with uh, the ribbon storage. Excuse me if I make you a little motion sickness. I am trying to use it, a tripod, but there's still, I'm rotating the camera. Yep. So, um, now we are at the scrapbook and paper storage, card making um, area where I store uh, most of my paper supplies and such. So in th those white Sterlite drawers, I have collections and papers, collections of scrapbook papers and other uh, scrapbooking papers. Well, these are all my acid-free products, basically, and tools. So there are punches and etc. in there. The drawers are all labeled, the boxes are all labeled, and if I have enough of one company's products, it has its own box or drawer, and it is labeled as such. Or if I am working with a particular company, I keep the supplies for the projects that I have to do for that company separate from my supplies and I indicate that on the label. The brown unit that you see here are actually two units. They are by Sauder, S-A-U-D-E-R. I got these from Canadian Tire a few years ago uh, when they had them, that one and only time that I am aware of and they were well priced and they are intended exactly for craft and uh, scrapbook paper storage. So I have two of those. They are great. I love them. If Canadian Tire had more, if it was easier to obtain these in Canada and they were better priced for us, I would buy more. But this is all I could afford several years ago. And... Uh, since then, I haven't seen more in my Canadian tires or other local stores. Above those white drawers, there is a shelf, uh, very inexpensively made. I know it's hard to see. The lighting is poor here. I actually have a couple of burnt lights <laughs> as if I, I don't have enough challenges to deal with. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Uh, so here is that shelf, uh, a piece, a shelving, closet shelving that I bought from the clearance uh, sector in my local hardware store. 
and I just have it on top of those drawers and the brown boxes are actually fabric and I purchased those at Dollarama several years ago when Dollarama's items were only still a dollar to a dollar fifty type of thing uh, so yeah I got them at the good price in between the scrapbook storage and the workbench, which I show you in part two, are these drawers in which I keep glitters, uh, mediums, gessos, and uh, paints, I, and everything is labeled as to exactly what kind of products they are. And there's a shot again of the storage above the workbench. So I'm going to turn you around. I'm trying to do it slowly. Okay. So that wall I just showed you faces this area where I work. This is my, my work table, the one, well, one of my work tables. There is a drawing or a drafting table right there. And as my, it's messy right now because this video <laughs> was, was already supposed to be made and the room was tidier when I did it the first time. So, on my desk here that I work at, which is a vintage, well, it's an antique actually, dining room table, and it is literally over 100 years old, but it was severely, and I mean, I'm not exaggerating, it was severely damaged, uh, tossed tossed out <laughs> it was supposed to be tossed out really uh, <clears throat> because of a flood and um, well I was determined to salvage what I could of it so I would at least have a working surface and I I do now it's a great surface to work on uh, most of the damaged parts um, well, the, the really damaged parts, well, just aren't, didn't make it. And the, the rest are kind of covered up. And I put a lot of storage on top of this table because it is so big. Beneath the table, sorry, I'm going to move you again a little bit. Beneath the table, if you can see that there, I have bins, boxes, baskets, whoops shelves where I use every inch of space for storage. I also have this small uh, drawer unit. Um, if you can see that, it's like three drawers. And that is the, an office cabinet that is intended to go under uh, a desk. It's a newer piece, but I still use it here and it has wheels so I can uh, wheel it in and out if I need to but I don't. <laughs> and the bottom drawer here I store scraps, leftover bits of scrapbooking paper. In the top two drawers I keep some of my most used office supplies and my most used and high-end art supplies uh, pencils and stuff at this end of my table I have set up a turntable that holds all of the tools and the most used adhesives um, that I use every day when I am uh, crafting and such. And this spins like so. And in the center of it, there is a, what used to be a kitchen gadget holder. And there are indentations all around this Lazy Susan. And in it, I have all sorts of vintage and this is not vintage but this is from uh i believe dollarama perhaps dollar tree but these other ones are vintage so it's a mix of the vintage and some newer pieces 
from uh, the dollar stores that hold more more tools and supplies I need to have nearby. This is actually a 1970-ish, I don't remember the year exactly, Lazy Susan from a fondue set. I kid you not. That is why it is so big. So in the center, there was another level and one would put the uh, fondue pot with the burner on it and so you could spin it around. It, this is something we used when I was a kid and it was great for fondues and stuff, but um, we, uh, well, we don't use it for that anymore. I saved it from, <laughs> I saved it from the uh, donation box so I could use it as a turntable for my tools. So there you go. Think out of the box, people. And I love this. I love this system. It works well, very, very well for me. So on the table, I have some plastic drawers. The uh, white ones there, those are 12 by 12 uh, plastic drawers that I purchased at Walmart. The tower of the drawers that are somewhat clear with gray are all from Dollarama. At the very top, at the very top of those gray Dollarama drawers is a clear X uh, office supply storage unit that I bought at a thrift store. And also on my table, I set up this very small little bookshelf. In there, I store um, most of my most used ink pads. I've separated the pigment inks from the dye inks and on that top shelf those are mostly um, pigment inks with the exception of the bin over here it says memories those are dye inks uh, but I use those frequently so that's why they're in that that box and I have my ATG uh, my adhesive guns there and on the lower shelf I keep my uh, Ranger Tim Holtz distress inks with the daubers that correspond with each color I have that vintage planter there the deer and that holds uh, pens and pencils that I always reach for whenever I am taking notes or jotting down things. Beside that, the pink box is um, a recycled cat food tray and I put little baskets inside to separate the items and I pull that out and I have all sorts of glues, some, some little uh, sponges, um, gel medium, and other sealers and glues that I use frequently and the little basket there are just some other um, tools that I, whoops that I use so this here is a tripod that I have rigged up here in order to keep it stable and prevent it from falling down whenever I extend the arm on it I put another shelf on top of that and on top of the shelf are these three storage units and on top of that is another shelf I'm just gonna move you up so you can see and some more stuff so the weight of that is basically holding my tripod in place <laughs> and that tripod holds this camera most of the time or maybe or another camera or my iPad and I can shoot video right there you may recognize my cup you may recognize this mat and my mug warmer there and that is where I will shoot uh, videos of and also some pictures of projects that I am working on 
but I do have extra lighting when I'm doing that so it's not as dark as it is now. In the clear bin there, those are my acrylic blocks for stamping. And over here to the left is my tower of color. It goes all the way up and of course there's stuff on top. On the very top where that you see that mannequin, the mannequin is beside that. It's on another stack of supplies but uh, those pens you see there and pencils those are watercolor so those are most of my watercolor pencils products but those are like the uh i could say they're not my most expensive my most expensive watercolors are stored elsewhere but those are the ones i reach for just my daily crafting stuff or for my exercises and drafts so this tower is made of wood and it spins and I purchased this at a thrift store and I believe this was like a store display for uh, CDs old CDs because the, the space is perfect for that and there was some advertising on it that suggested that's what it was anyway and I've always intended to paint it white but I've never gotten around to it so it is the color it is on this work table it's essential for me to have my most used tools and I don't know if you noticed but I've set this up in a in a like a U formation I have a vintage tape dispenser here to the left, and on there I put a roll of double-sided tape. I have my hand wipes, my trimmer, one of my paper trimmers. It's a small guillotine that I've had for years, and it works great. So it, this is where most of the actual work on my crafting RD projects gets done. There are some... Those are just some uh, binders and books that, uh, boy, there's so many things. There's some dictionaries there. There's some stencils. Uh, there's, what else is there? Yeah, there's a lot of templates too and stencils. In the white drawers that I was telling you that I got at Walmart, I store um, watercolor pencils, specialty pens pencils that one has blades uh one that drawer one of the drawers there has the extra large ink pads and the bottom drawer which you can't see uh just holds a lot of pieces of information that i need to have but i don't access very often so that's why they're tucked in there and the other drawer just has extra stamping writing supplies now to the right so here so this is like we're facing the ribbons again part of the ribbons but this is still where my table is this is where my work table is it is a small desk if you remember in part two i believe or part three I showed you my desk that I had in high school. This is the end of it. Uh, underneath that white unit is the, the actual desk. And above that white unit is a... Uh, okay. It is a carousel that spins. And in here, I have stored... Um, more craft or pigment inks these a lot of these are stamping up but i've also incorporated other brands in there and i keep the what i call my pigment inks here and these are different from the ones that were on my above my desk because i don't use these as often as uh, my other pigment inks and above there are tools that are very practical. I have brushes that 
our stencil brushes um, and stippling brushes that I use for stippling basically and, and I use it for effect in my stamping. These are daubers that I made. These are daubers that I made from uh, dog clothes pins. There's a cotton ball in here and there's a piece of white foam and a rubber band. And they they look homemade, they are, <laughs> but they, they work great. And I just try to have one for each color of pad that I have there. They're so cheap, I can afford to have one for each. So there in that little white unit, I'm going to move you again. There is where I keep the 6x6 pads of paper, mostly scrapbooking paper. A lot of which I got at Dollar Tree and uh, Dollar Rama, of course. But there's many, many different brands in there. Oh, there's another vintage planter. And there's a little uh, rabbit there that I crocheted. Uh, I mean, gurami style. That's the Japanese knitting. And there's just more papers in there. So in here is a storage system that I made. I posted about this on my blog a couple years ago. It is where I started to store all my flat stamps, the clear acrylic ones and the rubber cling ones. I soon filled this up and now I stored or I store my most recent uh, flat acrylic stamps or rubber stamps in those drawers. But I will eventually integrate them into here because there are some spots there are there is a bit of space available below that is a Costco unit in which I keep um, more paper crafting tools there are different cutters in there in this drawer I have these Dollar Tree and Dollarama folders and this holds all my collage uh, pieces that I've collected from magazines, vintage books, vintage magazines, online. Um, and in here, the, these are baggies full of store-bought um, embellishments like K&Company and... Company and those kinds of commercial brand. This drawer has a lot of stencils that are that I use a lot in mixed media. There's alphabet stencils and there's some alphabets and some stencils that come with stamp sets. And in the bottom, the very bottom drawer, the very bottom drawer there is my newer brush air, airbrush system in that pink storage drawer are a variety of papers tissue papers vintage papers and very fancy papers this is my beloved uh, faber castell unit and collection with pit pans all sorts of pencils and gelatos and here is a wooden bin that I got at a garage sale. And it holds all of my rulers, paper terrors, uh, some cutting pads. There are some stencils in here, but these are stencils that I was working with recently. So I just didn't have a chance to put them away with my other stencils. This is the drafting or drawing table that I may have already shown you in another part. Uh, sorry about that, but uh, here I go again. I purchased this at Giant Tiger, which is a chain of grocery slash department stores that we have in Canada. I purchased this several years ago in a clearance sale for like 40 bucks or so. And... Uh, it's great, it's adjustable, and it's small enough to fit in that space. On top of it, I have those white plastic baskets that hold um, my pencils. 
erasers, sharpeners. And I attach those to the table with Velcro. So I, that's why they're not sliding down. They stay there, and when I want to remove them, I just pull them off the Velcro. Below the table, I have this uh, cart that comes from Costco, sold as an office uh, file hanging cart. And I use it to put this box uh, that is from Creative Memories that has its own hanging file system within it, but it's also portable. And I have organized and stored all my alphabet stickers. And I like to use it in this cart because I can move it. I can move it out of the way if I want to sit at the desk to do some drawing or drafting. And uh, it just roll it underneath there because when I work at my other table on my scrapbook albums or cards, I have access to my alphabet stickers. And on the bottom section here, I have another Creative Memories container in which I store the long strips of stickers that are mostly words and sayings. In the blue, the blue, excuse my foot, <laughs> that blue stripe box are most of the, well, now all the 12 by 12 stencils that I have and some other very large stencils. The bag above that is uh, a canvas bag, and in there I just toss any leftover from projects I'm working on. And there's just some more storage. Craft Room Tour 2017 should be complete now. This was the fourth and final video. Here is a just an overshot of the studio from this end. So I hope you like this video. I hope that you will give it a thumbs up. <laughs> Please, uh, of course, like, comment, share. Yeah, subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. I would love to have any new subscribers. It would be awesome. And any comments or questions, especially if you want to know more about what's in one of the drawers, boxes, whatever, uh, please let me know. I do read all comments. I do respond to all of them. So thank you so much for hanging in there. And uh, check out all the videos in the series. There are four. Don't forget to check out my other videos. And thanks so much for watching and hanging in there. And take care of yourself. And I'll see you later. Bye.